Imagine as a United States citizen, if you left here to live abroad in Nepal or France, and when you decided to return to your country, to America, you were told that the United States no longer considered you a citizen and you could not return. Now imagine the country you had moved to told you that you were not their citizen either and that you had no right to be there. That is what it means to be stateless. Similar to the 2004 movie The Terminal, starring Tom Hanks, stateless persons are often unable to gain United States citizenship and, at the same time, cannot return to their native country. Today, there are an estimated 12 million people who are stateless worldwide, including here in the United States. Who are they? They are people who are not considered to be a citizen by any country. For people without citizenship or nationality, stateless persons um, lack many of the basic rights that we as Americans enjoy every day. For example, many of us take for granted the ability to travel within and outside the United States, to visit with our loved ones, to search for fulfilling work. For stateless persons, nationality, or more specifically the lack of nationality, poses an ever-present barrier to these very things. If you will ask about my dream, of course my dream, to see my family together, to reunion with my family, with my son. It's my dream. If I hear my mother, my mother die, or my dad, or one of them, and I can't even go and see them, dead, or funeral, I can't even make that. And I don't want to hear that. So how does a person become stateless? There are many ways it can happen. One way is through gaps in a country's citizenship laws. For example, some people are unable to obtain documents to prove their citizenship or who they are. Some countries refuse to recognize people as its citizens due to race, ethnicity, religion, or gender. And some people fall through the cracks when a country gains independence or dissolves, and the person does not qualify as a citizen under the nationality laws of the new country. Tatiana Lesnikova came to the United States almost 20 years ago from the Ukraine, shortly after its creation and the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Country, what we came from, did not accept us as its citizen. We were born in Russia, and we did not live in Russia and time, at the time when Russia proclaimed itself independent country, and Ukraine did not accept us because we uh, did not uh, leave uh, certain time when Ukraine started independent co country. DHS is aware of the problem of statelessness in the United States and is working to help stateless persons to the extent that we can. Unfortunately, we are not able to afford them a permanent solution at this time. Although U.S. law allows us to provide refuge and a path to legal permanent status to those who come to the country fleeing persecution, our laws do not allow individuals to obtain a permanent status solely on the basis of being stateless. In the United States, stateless persons face a variety of barriers and obstacles. These include detention, often for long periods of time, employment problems, the need to apply annually for work authorization makes finding and keeping a job difficult, reporting requirements which can last a lifetime, and travel restrictions, which can keep them from leaving the United States or even the particular state in which they live. Without legal status, stateless individuals may end up in detention. Once in detention, stateless persons cannot be deported as no country recognizes them as citizens. They can end up in detention for months or years. Even after release, a stateless person faces the risk of being detained again. One morning, on her way to work, Tatiana was stopped by DHS officials and put in detention, where she remained for almost three months. It was, it was like a whole world crashed down before my eyes. It was like a whole world turned upside down. It was so shocking experience. And also, I did not uh, struggle or protest. 
I was in roughly manner was handcuffed and shackled and they put me in van and then they went to apartment to my apartment and they pick up my son from his bed with clothes what he was sleeping in and also shackled and handcuffed. I tried to I tried to just encourage him that it's something maybe mistake, maybe we are not criminal, we are not killer, we, we didn't do anything wrong. They will let us go, don't worry, don't worry. Another obstacle is the lengthy and expensive process of applying for work authorization every 12 months, making regular and long-term employment a constant challenge for those who are stateless. Mohammed Arafi has been stateless in the United States for 25 years. He managed to put himself through college and he speaks five languages, but many job opportunities elude him due to his stateless status. I've been, I've been hired via this line, at Lion Bridge, because I have, I'm a, I'm a five language spoken. I was, I was qualified, passed the test and everything, but I cannot get to that job is for my status, which I'm stateless. And that is a big barrier for me to get anywhere I want to go. So they, they settled for me, they told me, uh, we, you just, it's not, you are not in, in uh, your, your, your qualification is good, but your status is not enough. So now I am, I'm a victim of this stateless. So I cannot even get to the judge what I want to do, was something I'm good at. All what I want, is from, from this, from my case, all what I want is to be, uh, have a green light to get to any job I ask for, something I am I'm qualified for, I want to go and get, and so I can provide for my family. Stateless persons must also regularly report to immigration officials. The requirement can vary from every month to every six months. But because a stateless person cannot be deported, they face these reporting requirements for the rest of their lives. And in one of our uh, check-in in person, I ask the officer if I do I have uh, come here to rest of my life, and he told yes. And it was uh, sound so unbelievable, it just like evil joke. Unable to obtain a passport or other travel documents, stateless persons cannot leave the United States, cutting them off from family members living in other parts of the world. People just uh, taking for granted to see their loved one, to take care of them, to just spoke, to just hug them. We have no right. I have no right to see my son for 18 years, I cannot. Stateless persons are also unable to travel outside of their state without obtaining prior permission. If it's granted, stateless persons must carry the proof of permission with them at all times. We can work with UNHCR and non-governmental organizations to help identify stateless persons. Um, we can provide certain benefits like work authorization on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to some of the stateless persons who come to our attention. However, without a change to our laws, there is no mechanism for DHS to provide individuals like Tatiana and Mohammed with a nationality and the permanent security and peace of mind that brings. To, to be stateless is just, uh, to me, to me in personally, they take a human out of me and 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 put it and, 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 and just put me as like, I am, I have no value at all. Coming to America, I sacrifice, I knew why I come in. I come in just to bring my children in safety play, but I lost everything, whatever it was my life before. I lost my career, I lost, I lost my family. It's most painful. I lost my son. The United States is a leader in protecting the rights of the world's most vulnerable people, including the stateless. 
this country has a proud record of supporting programs around the world to prevent and to reduce statelessness. And the UNHCR is willing to help the US in every way it can to address the issue of stateless individuals living within the borders of the United States. The best solution for stateless individuals is for Congress to pass legislation which would provide them with a permanent solution and nationality. UNHCR is the organization mandated by the United Nations to work with governments to prevent and reduce statelessness around the world. 